Hey guys, thanks for coming to my channel. Today we're gonna be going over the couple beaches in New York that I really like, long sands and short sands, maybe take a trip by the Nubble, and then talk about which beach might be best for you. So, let's go. Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm super excited to have you. I'm gonna be making content to you guys every single week. So if you're interested in staying in touch, what's going on in the Southern Maine, Southern New Hampshire area, go ahead and feel free to subscribe. Only if I deserve it though. You know, my videos could suck, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> today we're gonna to be talking about short sands and long sands. So two different beaches, very, very close to each other, and yet there are some differences between the two. So long sands is gonna be a, a two mile strip of beach. Really nice beach if you're planning to go out, relax, lay out, maybe jump in the water a little bit. Again, two miles of frontage on the, the ocean. So a lot of space to access water. You're not gonna be crammed up as much as short sands. Also, if you are looking to do any kind of, you know, stand up paddle boarding, surf, surfing, they have a big surf zone at Long Sands. It's all great for that. There's Liquid Dreams too right on Long Sands. So you literally just cross the street, tons of sidewalks on both beaches, brand new bathhouses. So you can go rent a surfboard, try it out, kayaks, you know, stand up paddle boards, boogie boards. <laughs> all that stuff is great for Long Sands. There are a couple general stores too. So if you are getting a little bit hungry at lunchtime, you can go up across the street and you got, you know, three, four, good restaurants, easy to get to. So that leads me to another thing. Long Sands, the downsides you could see, you know, there's not a huge area, it's more narrow. So you get a lot of people going to those same four restaurants off the beach, because that is two miles. So there's a lot more people at Long Sands than Short Sands. So you got all those people leaving for lunch. You know, if you're hungry, I would recommend bringing your own or, <laughs> or eating lunch a little bit early. But honestly, I love Long Sands. I used, I grew up in the area, I love the area. And what I used to do is go to Long Sands, hang out, there's plenty of room to throw the football or whatever, just because there is more open area. And then at night, you know, Short Sands is great. It's a little downtown area. Um, you got Funorama, tons of arcade games if you have little kids or whatever. There's actually bo uh, bowling too, which is basically a, a bowling alley shop. So you can go in there, bowl some if it starts to rain or something like that. Tons of shops downtown. And then you get Goldenrod. Everyone I think that has heard of York, Maine knows Goldenrod. They make the best saltwater ta taffy on earth, I think. <laughs> I think right now, I, I have to check, but they might be doing shipments too with COVID going on. So maybe something to check out guys. I'll put it, I'll put it the link in the description if there is. But yeah, so the biggest difference is I go to Long Sands during the day, go surf, come back, you know, maybe later in the evening or whatever, go to Short Sands. It's great just to walk around, relax. There's a gazebo down Short Sands too, basketball courts, playground, and the gazebo, they have some concerts too in the summer. So there'd be like jazz bands. You sit, you know, sit on the lawn. They have fireworks for their July. There's a baseball field down there. York's Wild Kingdom, <laughs> another big attraction. They got a, you know, merry-go-round Ferris wheel thing. They got Bengal tigers elephants, giraffes, like kind of crazy stuff you wouldn't think you'd find in Maine. They have it at York Soil Kingdom. They have go-karts too, which I used to be obsessed with when I was little. That's really more the downtown area. You got shaved ice, slushies, everyone loves those, uh, candies. Everything you can kind of think of as downtown. Short Sands is great too. Low tide, tide goes way out. There's plenty of area to spread out. It's when the tide comes in a little bit, it could get a little congested. I'd recommend too, if you're going to Short Sands over Long Sands, get there a little bit early. Parking can be kind of uh, difficult on, on both beaches. Long Sands, towards the end of it, it's mostly rock, rocky area. So there's not a bunch of places to lay out there, but there are parallel parking spots. There's no parking lot at Long Sands. Short Sands has one parking lot. So Long Sands, you have to parallel park. So you might be stuck going towards the end of the beach where there's all rocks and having to walk yourself up to a sandy area, which isn't a big deal but both great beaches. Some people haven't even seen what I'm talking about here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let the B-roll show you kind of what it looks like.
<laughs> the cool thing is, fun fact, a lot of people didn't know this, but Long Sands Beach is actually a private owned beach. The Norton family ended up buying it in the Great Depression for 175 bucks. 175 bucks. So pretty good investment if you ask me. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed the tour. Thanks for coming with me to Short Sands, Long Sands, and the Nubble Lighthouse. There was a few other shops and stuff I couldn't fit in because I didn't want this video to be 30 minutes long. I know you guys are busy. <laughs> so I appreciate you watching. Feel free to subscribe if you like this. I'm going to be posting videos every single week from now on. And I'll see you soon.